Let's turn our Bible this morning to Epistle of Paul the Apostle to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's read verses 10, 11 and 12. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10, 11 and 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that He may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins good about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and a feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I like to draw attention to verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Church, as I was waiting upon God yesterday night, I was really waiting upon God for a word. I said, Lord, I need a word from you. I don't want to speak anything out of my heart and out of my mind. I want a word from you to share with your people. At about 11.30 yesterday night, you know, God gave me this verse, verse 10. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. In the power of His might. Paul says, in order to be strong in the Lord, you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's what he says in that verse. If you want to be strong in the Lord, if you want to stand against the wiles of the devil, if you want to overcome all the cunning schemes of the evil one, and if you want to escape from the snares, then you need the power of his might, which is nothing but the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So the title for this morning's message is Blessings Through Anointing. Blessings Through Anointing. Church, but in the last days, we need to become strong. There's a lot of spiritual opposition. There's a spiritual warfare in the invisible realm. Many things we don't see with our physical eyes. But there's a constant combat, warfare against you and me in the invisible realm by the powers of darkness. And it's your anointing that will cover you. Anointing serves as a covering. Anointing protects us. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that makes us fit to overcome sin, Satan and flesh. Christians can give no lame excuses regarding falling a prey to the cunning devices of Satan. When we meditate on God's word and lead a totally dependent life on the Holy Spirit, we can know the difference between the wild and the precious. We can know the difference between the spiritual things which give us true satisfaction and the fake things that lead us to deception. Satan is a deceiver. Do not give room to the devil. Satan may not come to you as a roaring lion, but he may come to you as an angel of light. But if we live constantly under the anointing and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we can experience victory over all his cunning snares. Early morning today as I was waiting upon the Lord, the Lord gave me a verse and, it, and it, that verse encouraged me so much. Will you turn the Bibles to book of Agai chapter 2 and verse 5. The book of Agai chapter 2 and verse 5. It's a prophetic word. This is what God is saying to you this morning. Refer to your Bibles. Mark this verse in your Bible. God is speaking. 
book of Agai chapter 2 and verse 5. According to the word that I covenanted with you when he came out of Egypt. This is not only for the people of Israel. You and I have come out of our spiritual Egypt. We were all once born in Egypt spiritually. But God with his outstretched arm had brought us out of Egypt. And see what the Lord says. So my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. How many of you believe this? The Lord says I brought you out of Egypt. I brought you out of bondage. I brought you out of the clutches of the evil one. So my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. Holy Spirit is with you and me. And I want to share with you this morning sevenfold blessings that come through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Sevenfold blessings. Seven stands for perfection. Sevenfold blessings that come through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Number one, when you are anointed by the Holy Spirit, you shall be transformed. You shall be changed into another man. You shall be changed into another woman. The first blessing is transformation. Church, I want you to think for a moment. A good school or a good college cannot make someone good. Do you know that? Amen. We always want to put our children, you know, in the best school, in the best colleges. But let me tell you, a good college or a good school cannot make someone good. Police department cannot make someone good. The court of law can only punish a person, but it cannot change a person. Amen. Holy Spirit of God is the only person who can change your life and mine. Who can transform our lives. Recently, a few days ago, I saw an advertisement about computer education. And this is what that advertisement says. We change lives. <laughs> I was just laughing at it. Today, computer education is so popular in the world. Today, the computer institutes and colleges making an ad amazing advertisement. We change lives. But in what way? In what way? In what way they have changed the people? In fact, this technology has made man from bad to worse. To the invention of internet people are corrupted and defiled through filthy content but it's the anointing of the holy spirit that can change your nature that can change my nature that can change our thinking pattern that can radically change and transform our lives and make us different people altogether amen now, will you turn your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 10? <coughs> See what the anointing can do. 1 Samuel chapter 10. And I'm reading verse 6. It's a well-known passage of scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, <laughs> and shall be turned into another man. This is what the anointing of the Holy Spirit can do. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Prophet Samuel spoke these words to Saul. And it says when the anointing come upon you Saul. You will become another man. Your life will be completely changed. It's God's anointing that makes us powerful people. It's God's anointing that makes us victorious people. It's anointing that makes us good people. It's anointing fire that melts our carnal nature and makes us spiritual man and spiritual woman. Amen. It's the ministry of the anointed man that will bring blessing to our lives in the ministry of the anointed man people shall be saved people shall be delivered and people shall be blessed 
Only in an anointed ministry, people will be sanctified. People can be prepared for the coming of the Lord. It's the anointing that transforms an earthly man into a spiritual man. It's anointing that changes a stingy man into a generous man. It's anointing that transforms a short-tempered man into a meek person. It's anointing that transforms the empty, dark, shapeless earth into a beautiful, vast expanse, what we see today. In the book of Genesis, we read, the earth was without form. It was void, emptiness, everywhere darkness. The Bible says, the Spirit of God hovered upon the face of the deep. When there was nothing, when there was darkness and emptiness, the Spirit of God was hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. And we know when God spoke, the Spirit of God worked and everything was regenerated, everything was recreated. That's what exactly happens in your life and mine. Hallelujah. It's anointing that changes an independent Christian. Hallelujah. And brings him into a fellowship with God's people. It's anointing that changes an indisciplined Christian into a disciplined Christian. Brother, sister, you may have wealth, money, status, all comforts, but if you don't have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it's of no use. That is a problem. It says, a living dog is better than a dead lion. A living dog is better than a dead lion. That life, that life is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The life, a new life, a changed life is the result of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Think of Saul for a moment. Before he could be anointed by Prophet Samuel, he was a very ordinary man. He was a very timid person. He was just going in search of his father's donkeys. Nothing was bothered about this. Nobody was bothered about this man. I was completely ordinary person. Amen. But providentially, through the pre plan and purpose of God, he met Prophet Samuel. And God's plan was revealed to that man. And Prophet Samuel said, As you go, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And he will also prophesy. And God will give you a new heart. And you will be a changed person. See that verse in that same chapter. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Verse 9 and 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Verses 9 and 10. It was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel. God gave him another heart. God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill. Behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, came upon Saul, and he prophesied among them. <coughs> Amen. It's something amazing. It's something amazing. When the anointing of the Lord came upon him, he became a mighty man all of a sudden. Can you just imagine an ordinary man becoming extraordinary? A timid man Becoming so bold and he was outright ready for battle. Saul was an untrained man. He had never been to a battle before. Totally untrained. Inexperienced. Soon after the anointing, he was straight away ready for a battle. First Samuel chapter 11 and verse 1. The Nagash, the Ammonite came up. And encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nehash, Make a covenant with us and we will serve you. But you see what Nehash said. Nehash the Hamanite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, That I may thrust out all your right eyes, And lay it for reproach upon all Israel. Can you just imagine? This enemy says, I will pluck out all your right eyes. If you want to. If you want to make covenant with me, then I will pluck out all your right eyes. People were the elders of the Jabesh Gilead. They were very disturbed. They didn't know what to do. They were gripped with fear. 
Now see verse 4. Then came the messengers of Gibeah of Saul and told the tidings and the ear of the people. And all the people lift up their voices and wept. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field. And Saul said, what aid of the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jebesh. And the Spirit of God, listen to this, verse 6. The Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings. And his holy anger was kindled greatly. Verse 7. And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces. And sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by the hands of the messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. Now verse 11. And it was so on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch, and slew the Hamonites until the eve of the day. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered, so the two of them were not left together. Amen. Amazing victory. Earlier, Saul had never fought a battle before in his life. He was just an ordinary man. He was just going in search of his father's donkeys, lost donkeys. But when the anointing of the Lord came upon him, he got a new heart. <coughs> Brother, sister, it's anointing that will change your life. Ask the Lord to anoint your prayers this morning. Don't ask for any other blessing. Let this be only prayer. Lord, fill me with your anointing, God. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, God. Let my cup run over, God. I want to be filled and refilled. And I want to operate under the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to speak under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatever I do, with not, my, with all my, not with my own strength, but with the power of the anointing. Remember the Lord said, not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon us. The first thing that happens in our life, we are changed and we are changed into another man, another woman. I suppose that we are all anointed people. God is baptized in the Holy Spirit. But do you see change in your life? Do you see change in your nature? Do you see real change in your attitudes? Amen. That's a proof. Of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What does the Bible say? If any man be in Christ. If any man be in Christ. What is the meaning of Christ? Mashiach. The anointed one. The anointed. Christ means the anointed one. If any man be in the anointed one. If any man is in the anointing. Amen. The Bible says all the old things will pass away. Because all things will become new. Everything will become new. Amen. For example, a person who loves cinema so much, when he is anointed, he will begin to hate it. Is there anybody, any witness here this morning? No witness? Oh, thank God. Hallelujah. He will begin to love the worship service instead of sitting before a television set watching a cinema. The love that he had for cinema, actors and actresses will become so bitter and that person you know, we love to have fellowship with God's people and with God's saints. He will be, be, begin to hate the worldly pleasures. His interests will change. His thinking pattern will change. The reason is, God has taken away his old heart and given him a new heart. How many of you have a new heart this morning? You need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Is there anybody struggling under any bondage or petty sins? Smoking, lust, or addicted to pornography, or any secret sin or so on. Friend, pray and seek the Lord for the anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life. Confess your sins and forsake them. Ask the Lord for the anointing. Say, Lord, I need your anointing. Cry unto God. God will anoint you and change you into another man, another woman. Your failure will be turned into great success. You shall have victory after victory. Amen. Turn the Bible to Isaiah 61 and verse 7. There's a beautiful prophecy. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 7. I don't know to whom God is speaking, but this is a word of prophecy to somebody in this congregation. Isaiah 61 and verse 7. 
for your shame he shall have double and for your confusion they shall rejoice in their portion therefore in the land they shall possess the double everlasting joy shall be unto them how many of you believe this do you believe this for your shame that you had gone through for the humiliation that you had gone through the lord says you shall have double for the confusion you had the lord says you shall rejoice in the portion that i am going to give you therefore in the land they shall possess the double everlasting joy shall be unto them it's anointing that you have hallelujah received will completely drastically radically transform your life and all your if your life changes your circumstance also will change amen now listen church if the anointing that you have received has not changed your life then your anointing is questionable are you with me it's a solemn thought if the anointing that you say that you have received has not changed your life or it's it's not changing your life that means your anointing is questionable there are three different kinds of spirits in operation three different kinds of spirits in operation what is the human spirit other is the spirit of satan and the other one is the spirit of christ we must always check in what spirit we are operating our lives three different kinds of spirits in operation human spirit spirit of christ and what's the third one spirit of sin spirit of antichrist in other words spirit of antichrist where do we see the spirit of man turn your bibles luke's gospel chapter 9 and verse 55 Luke's gospel chapter 9 and verse 55 and when his disciples James and John saw this they said Lord will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did but he turned and rebuked them and said you know not what manner of spirit you are of is there anybody who's having a study Bible what is that in the margin for this for the spirit anybody you have any study Bible what is that in the margin for the spirit yes any, yeah you said it nature very good nature that's a human nature that's a human spirit in operation just because somebody didn't join with these disciples they want the fire to come down and consume them as Elijah did on Mount Carmel. Jesus turned and rebuked these disciples. And he said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. In other words, the Lord said, don't operate in a human spirit. Don't allow your human nature to operate. That's dangerous. That is very much against the spirit of Christ. Human nature, human nature is an Adamic nature, inherited from our forefather Adam after his fall. It always opposes the spirit of Christ. Therefore, we need to, we need to subjugate or we need to bring our human spirit under subjection so that the spirit of Christ will operate in and through our life. See what is the spirit of Christ. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. Paul says. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ. Is none of his. Do you see that in the Bible? Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. Romans 8 and verse 9. Now we are not in the flesh. Yes. But in the spirit. Mm. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. How many of you can say this morning, I have the spirit of Jesus Christ in me. I have the Holy Spirit in me. Amen. 
but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwelleth in you the holy spirit dwelling in you now if any man have this have not the spirit of christ is none of his the lord says if you don't have my spirit within you if you're going to operate in some other spirit then you are not of me not of me so we should not be deceived the bible says a possible even the elect will be deceived i've heard some people listen to this i've heard some people when they come to a worship service they will speak in tongues but when they go out of the church they speak all rubbish what spirit they are in not the spirit of christ that means there's some other spirit in operation nature is not changed been a believer for 5 years 10 years 15 years 20 years same old lifestyle same old talk same old attitude same old behavior even after 20 years of being a believer still they are not able to, cannot get along with another brother or sister how do you say you are anointed what spirit you are of we need to search our hearts we need to analyze we need to go to the presence of god and say lord in what spirit i am in i am operating i don't want the human spirit the human nature i want to imbibe the divine nature i want the holy spirit so that my life will be completely changed amen hallelujah the third one is a spirit of antichrist we'll see a little later but if the anointing comes upon you it shall change your life change my life it will make you another man another woman altogether that's a first blessing number 2 number 2 when the anointing comes upon you you will begin to do good to other people you will begin to do good to other people wherever you go <coughs> you will do only good even when people harm you you will do only good to them even when people despise you you will do only good to them nothing but good nothing but good that's a result of the anointing of the holy spirit i call this selfless service this is a second blessing that comes through the anointing of the holy spirit amen have you seen a man who is anointed he will always do good to other people church there is a possibility listen to this we can be people we can we can be people who do good to others or evil to others there is a possibility we can do good or we can do evil to others but if you are an anointed man if you are an anointed woman then you will do only good you will overcome evil with good even when other people are bad to you you will good to you will be good to them amen on the contrary devil is a thief he is a murderer he is a deceiver he does nothing but evil <coughs> but when a believer gives room to the devil he or she will become devil's agent instrument and the devil will begin to use that person to do evil and think evil to other people see what the bible says about jesus christ anointing is connected with our good works don't forget your anointing is connected with your good works acts of the apostle chapter 10 verse 38 again it's a familiar verse acts 10:38 it's about jesus christ now god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him amen how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power what was the result the immediate result he went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil amen how many of you can say this morning i do only good even when people do evil to me 
I just do good to them. Because I'm an anointed person. I'm an anointed man. I'm an anointed woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Just search your heart. Search your life to see whether you do only good. There are some people who do good when other people do good. They do evil when other people do evil. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about God's people who are anointed, who can do only good. Even when other people do evil, we cannot do evil. We cannot even think any harm to such people. But rather we will bless them with all our hearts and we'll pray for them. And when opportunity comes, we will do good to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power, he went about doing good. What good? What good? It means, you know, what good did Jesus do? Or what does it mean to do good? What does it mean to do good? Turn your Bibles. What happened when Jesus was anointed? Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. What does it mean to do good? Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, see the good things that He did. He preached the gospel to the poor. Heal the brokenhearted. Preach deliverance to the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind. Set at liberty them that are bruised. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Take a decision this morning, God's people. Say, Lord, I need to be anointed so that I will do only good. Only good. I will not even think any harm to anybody. Anybody. Even to my enemy. Of course, we don't have any enemies other than the devil. Isn't it? We may have a lot of enemies. Others may consider us as enemies. But in God's sight, God is witness. Personally, we don't have any enemy other than the devil. How many of you can say amen? There can be many other people who consider us as their enemies. But we have only one enemy. That is the devil. Amen. What does it mean to do good? Turn your Bible to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12. <laughs> Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. And he said unto them, Yes. What men shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Amen. What does it mean to do good? To do good is to lift up a soul from the pit of sin. That's what Jesus is saying here. To do good means to lift up a soul from the pit of sin. To lift up a person from the mighty clay of sin. Now think of the brothers of Joseph. <coughs> they wanted to cast Joseph into the pit. They can never do good. They can never do good. The thoughts were full of evil. Why? Why they hated Joseph? Because his father loved him so much. Why did they hate Joseph? Because his father Jacob gave him a multicolored coat. Think of the brothers of Joseph. The thought is others should not be blessed. Others should not be used by God. Others should not come up in life. When Joseph was bringing food for them, imagine taking Joseph taking food for these brothers who hated, hated him so much. And they saw Joseph afar off and they said, Oh, dreamer is coming. Let us kill him. Let us cast him into the pit. Amen. But do you know the mind of Joseph? What a contrast. What a contrast. See the mind of Joseph in Genesis chapter 50, verses 19 and 20. Genesis chapter 50, 
verses 19 and 20. Genesis chapter 50 verses 19 and 20. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for, I, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me. You thought evil against me. But God made it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Amen. You meant evil. You thought evil. But God made it good for me. Therefore, I am not going to retaliate. I am not going to take revenge. But I am going to sustain you. Amen. Something tremendous in the Old Testament. To see a character like Joseph, who had New Testament anointing and grace. Brother, sister, Jesus Christ was anointed. Yegoshua was anointed to do good. He lifted up the soul of those who were drowning in the mighty clay of sin. <coughs> Today, all over the world, people are in the pit of sin. People are in the pit of distress. People are in the pit of idolatry. People are in the pit, pit of wickedness. Are you burdened in your heart to lift them up? Do you have a burden in your heart to lift up such people from the pit of sin? Will you take a decision and say, Lord, give me that burden so that I'm going to pray and I'm going to cry out to you, Lord, so that such people shall be lifted up from their terrible situation. Amen. Only anointed people can do this. Do you know that? Who will have burden for other people? Only those who are anointed. If you don't have burden for other people, it's a simple indication anointing is not upon you. Did you hear me, church? If you don't have burden for souls, <coughs> if you don't have burden to lift up other people, it's a simple indication the anointing is upon, not upon you. If the anointing is upon you, <coughs> automatically you will have the burden to lift up other people. In prayer. Or through counseling. Or through speaking to them. Or by bringing them into the sanctuary, God's house. What does Paul say to the Galatians in Galatians 6, 9? Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap Finish it. If we faint not. If we faint not. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing. We are always bothered about doing well. But Paul is talking about well-doing. There's a difference between doing well and well-doing. We are concerned about doing well. Oh, I must do well in life. I must come up in life. I must be blessed. Thank God, nothing wrong in that. But Paul's saying something different. Do not, let us not become weary in well-doing. Doing good to other people. Whatever way possible. Wherever you are. In simple ways. Try to do something good to some, some people. This is my prayer. Every day I pray this prayer. Lord, today I must do good to at least one person in Show me somebody, Lord. Show me somebody. Or send me to somebody. Or bring somebody to me. So that I can do good to that person. This is my everyday prayer. And God is so faithful. God is so faithful to answer this prayer. Amen. Because I know I cannot do that with my own strength. Only God has to lead me. Or God has to lead somebody to come to me. But it's something tremendous. It's wonderful experience. You know, to do good to other people. Every day, every day. How many is going to offer that prayer to the Lord from today? Show me somebody, Lord, today. Or take me to somebody today. Or bring somebody to me, Lord. So that I can do good to that person. In some way or other. In my own simple ways. I want to do something good, Master. Because that's what Jesus did. That's a result of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If the anointing of God is upon you, you will do good. You cannot but do good. How many of you believe in me? Amen. Number three. When the anointing comes upon you, yoke shall be destroyed. The yoke 
of the evil one shall be destroyed. I call this deliverance. Deliverance. When anointing comes, the yoke that is upon a person shall be broken. Shall be broken. Have you seen a have you seen a yoke? You know, it's a it's a it's a symbol of slavery. The yoke that is used upon the oxen, it's a symbol of slavery. Today, many, many people are slave to sin. When Satan was your master, he had laid a yoke of sin, yoke of bondage upon your life. Yoke of fear and guilt and condemnation. But when the anointing comes upon your life, that yoke is destroyed. That oak is destroyed. Amen. It's something wonderful. It's something amazing. Turn your Bible to Isaiah. Chapter 10 verse 27. Chapter 10 and verse 27. Praise the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day. That his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. And his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. Because of the anointing. It shall come to pass in the day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. And his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall not be removed. It shall be destroyed. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It's anointing that breaks the yoke. Now in the whole Testament times. They had these oil mills and flour mills. Yoke were laid on the shoulders of the slave. Can you just picture the scene? They did not use animals, you know, to tread the corn or to crush the oil. Yoke were laid on the shoulders of the slaves and they have to go around pulling the heavy yoke. This is how Samson was made to grind the flour. They were tied and bound to the yoke. This is a picture of a man who is in sin. It's a picture of a man who is in bondage. But when the anointing comes upon that person, it breaks that yoke. It destroys that yoke. Amen. Think of Samson for a moment. The heavy yoke was upon him and it was grinding the flour. And he cried unto the Lord and said, Lord, remember me this once. Remember me this once. God heard that prayer. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Amen. And the yoke was broken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Church today in the lives of many many believers. I am not talking about unbelievers. I am talking about believers. In the lives of many believers. Satan has laid heavy yoke. Of bondage. Yoke of sin, secret sins. Yoke of lust. God wants to set you free. Such people, they want to come out of it, but they are not able to come. They are not able to come out. They want to live a holy life, but they are not able to. That yoke is referred to the yoke that was once upon the people of Israel. Refer to the verse again. Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. Read this. Isaiah chapter 10. Verses 26 and 27. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Did you notice something in verse 26? At the rock of Oreb. As his rod was upon the sea. As his rod was upon the sea. The yoke that is referred to here. Is the yoke that was upon the people of Israel. When they came out of Egypt. <coughs> when Moses lifted up the rod upon the Red Sea. We all know the Red Sea parted into two. And the people of Israel were delivered from the yoke of Egypt. 
from the captivity, from the bondage of Egypt. The yoke of Egypt was broken. At that time, when Moses lifted up the rod toward the Red Sea. That's a picture, the rod is a picture of the anointing power of God. When Moses lifted up the rod to the Red Sea, when the people crossed the Red Sea, the yoke of Egypt, the bondage was broken. Amen. <laughs> it was a yoke of hard labor. It was a yoke of hard labor. What was the yoke of Egypt? Yoke of Egypt is nothing but yoke of hard labor. Even today, Satan is laying the yoke of hard labor upon God's people. I've heard sisters saying, <coughs> I have to cook, I have to do this, I have to do that. So no time to read the Bible, no time to pray. I've heard brothers saying, oh, Sunday, this Sunday I have to go to office for overtime. I cannot come for Bible study. I've got such a lot of work. Friend, you are under yoke. You are under yoke. It's a yoke of under, it's a yoke of bond, hard labor. When the people of Israel were in Egypt, what was the problem? You know, when they, when Moses said, let my people go that they may go out to the wilderness to worship, what did Pharaoh do? He increased the labor. Are you with me this morning? He increased the labor. What did Pharaoh say? Increase the labor of these Israelites so that they will not speak vain things. They will not say we have to worship God. Pharaoh called the worship us vain thing. Be careful brother. Sister be careful. Don't ever come under the bondage yoke of hard labor. That's not God's plan. That's not God's purpose. Amen. <laughs> you must be free to worship God. You must be free to spend time with the Lord. Fellowship with God. And fellowship with God's people. So that you can grow in your spiritual life. If there's anybody this morning. If you're under the yoke of hard labor. Ask God to set you free. The anointing shall break that yoke. Yoke of Egypt. Yoke of Egypt is a yoke of hard labor. I was sharing yesterday in our Hebrew seminar. You need not work hard for your blessing. Do you know that? You need not work hard. We meditate on that verse in Proverbs 10.22. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich. He had it no sorrow with it. He had it no sorrow with it. The original meaning in the Hebrew Bible is, He does not had the pain of hard labor. When God blesses you, he does not give you the pain of hard labor. In other words, you need not work so hard for your blessing. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you, sh you need not work. No, we have to work. But you need not work hard for your blessing because blessing comes from the Lord. Amen. Think of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Did they work for food? Did they work for food? No. But did they work? Oh, come on. <laughs> they did work. What was their work? To protect the garden, to maintain the garden. Keep the garden and dress the garden. They had to protect the garden and maintain the garden. But they did not work for food. God blessed them with food without even working for it. But when they came out of the presence of the Lord, when they lost the fellowship with God, then the hard labor started. Hard labor began. After coming out of the presence of God, then they have to work hard. For their food. For their food. Can I tell you something? If you are in fellowship with the Lord. If you are in the presence of the Lord. If you have continual fellowship with God. Amen. You need not work hard for your blessing. Amen. 
Bible says the land could not withhold the blessings of Abraham. Did Abraham struggle to get those blessings? What did Abraham do to get such a lot of blessing? Nothing. Nothing. He had wonderful fellowship with the Lord. That's it. Bible says the latter end of Joseph, Job was blessed twofold. The Lord blessed Job twofold. Did he struggle to get that twofold blessing? No. Absolutely not. God blessed that man. When you honor God, when you have constant fellowship with God, when your life is right with God, automatically blessing comes. Blessing comes. You and I need not run after blessing at all. Blessing comes after us. Somebody say amen. So this is the truth. This is the truth. Hard labor is from the devil. Hard labor is from the devil. He deploys that strategy so that you will have no time for your God. You know what the devil is saying? You work hard. You work hard. Get so much of money. You earn so much of money. You think it is a blessing. Not at all. You are deprived of God's blessings. You are deprived of God's presence. You are deprived of God's favor. Today God's people are in deception. People think, oh I need to work hard and earn a lot of money for my family. And when they get the money, they think it is a blessing. In the course of the hard work, no time for God, no time to come to church, no time to worship, no time to pray, no time to read the Bible. They work, 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 work. They get earn a lot of money. Friend, that's not the blessing from the Lord. It will have sorrow in it. In that money which you get, you will have sorrow in it. You will have the pain of hard labor in it. That's not God's purpose. That's not God's plan. Amen. Try to understand what God is saying. It doesn't mean that we should resign a job and sit at home and 24 hours pray. No. <coughs> we need to go to work. We need to work. But first priority to God. Amen. I must have sufficient time for my God. I must have solid, quality, substantial time for my God. If I am careful in that one aspect, I will be richly blessed. Nobody can stop my blessing. I will be blessed in such a way that other people will envy me. Amen. This is biblical truth what I am preaching to you this morning. Amen. So be careful of hard labor. Don't work to the extent that you say, I have no time for the Lord. That's hard labor. That's from Pharaoh. That's from the devil. That's from the devil. The yoke of Midianites was broken during the days of Gideon. <coughs> that was the yoke of destruction. The Midianites came and they destroyed the crops of the people of Israel. <coughs> Thank God. God used Gideon to break the bondage. Of destruction of the Midianites. Sim similarly the Lord said. That he would break off the yoke of the Assyrians. The Lord said. That he will break off the yoke of the Assyrians. What is that yoke? It's a yoke of injustice done to God's people. <coughs> Turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 14. Verse 25. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 25. Read it. That I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders. Amen. Break the, I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon the mountain and tread him under the foot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from their shoulders. Assyrians were doing injustice to the people of Israel. <coughs> they were putting fear into the hearts of God's people. Now listen church. If you read this Isaiah's prophecy carefully. The Assyrians referred to here. Speaks of the Antichrist. 
if you read this prophecy very carefully, you will understand that Assyrians referred to here speaks of the Antichrist reign during the seven years tribulation period. By the way, how many of you know, even today, even today, the spirit of Antichrist is at work. How many of you agree with me? Those seven years period after the church is raptured in the secret coming of Jesus Christ, people shall be left behind. There will be still church going on under the rule, reign of the Antichrist. Literally, Antichrist shall be revealed. But till today, Antichrist is not revealed because the Holy Spirit is here. That's the reason he is not able to expose himself. He is not revealed. He is hidden. But he is existing. But once the church is raptured, the Holy Spirit will be taken up and the grace will be taken up. And he will freely expose and reveal himself. But you must know Antichrist is living today. Are you with me? Are you? He's already living. And therefore the Bible says the spirit of Antichrist is working today. Turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4 verse 3. <coughs> 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3. In every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is part of that spirit of Antichrist whereof he have heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world. Amen. Even now already it is in the world. The spirit of Antichrist is working even today. Only thing is not revealed. He has not manifested himself. But still working today against the church, against God's people. It is the spirit of Antichrist that is trying to make God's people ungodly. It is the spirit of Antichrist that makes God's people to leave the church fellowship. It's the spirit of Antichrist that turns even good people evil. If your heart turned toward ungodliness, then it is the work of Antichrist. Turn away from ungodliness and turn to godly living. Friend, don't give room to the spirit of Antichrist which is at work even today. The yoke shall be broken, destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. The fourth blessing that comes from the anointing. Goodness and mercy will follow you. I call this enriched life. Turn your Bible to the very familiar text in Psalm 23 verses 5 and 6. Psalm 23. Shepherd Psalm. Shepherd Psalm 23 verses 5 and 6. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. See the last part of verse 5. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. What is the result of that anointing? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen. If you want goodness and mercy to follow you, then you must be an anointed man. You must be an anointed woman. It's anointing that brings goodness and mercy after us. Amen. Church, think of Saul for a moment. We read about Saul. Who had lost his anointing. Listen to this carefully. <coughs> we know that Saul was once anointed by God. But because he disobeyed God. The Holy Spirit departed from him. He lost the anointing. And we read about that Saul. Who lost the anointing. In Psalm 32 verse 10. We read about Saul. Who had lost his anointing. In Psalm 32 and verse 10. See the plight of this man who had lost the anointing. It's, it's talking about Saul. Psalm 32 verse 10. Many sorrows 
shall be to the wicked but he that trusts in the lord mercy shall compass him about amen mercy many sorrows many sorrows shall be to the wicked david is talking about whom this is a psalm of david david is talking about saul here david is talking about saul a man who had lost his anointing many sorrows shall be to the wicked but he that trusted in the lord come on mercy shall compass him about <coughs> church many sorrows for saul because he had lost his anointing but mercy shall compass david because god has anointed his head with the oil mercy for the man who is anointed sorrow for the man who had lost his anointing today what is encompassing you sorrow or mercy mercy very important church it is not god's plan that you should be encompassed by sorrow but you should be encompassed by mercy david a man was anointed says he anoints my head with oil goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life he's talking about two things <coughs> goodness and mercy goodness means material blessings mercy means spiritual blessings therefore through the anointing you shall have both these blessings earthly blessings and heavenly blessings that's what david says because god has anointed me he hath anointed my head with fresh oil god will bless me with earthly blessing and god will bless me with heavenly spiritual blessings goodness and mercy amen think of david for a moment <coughs> he died in in his good old age before he could close his eyes he made solomon his son to sit on the throne <coughs> he gave all his gold and silver to solomon and told him to build a temple for the lord but what about saul what about saul saul lost the anointing and had a tragic death do you know that David had a beautiful death. David closed his eyes before he could close his eyes he called Solomon gave the gold silver all this possession and said Solomon my son God wants you to build a church temple for for the Lord. And that's how he closed his eyes. But how did Saul close his eyes? It was a man who lost the anointing. Bible says in one day in one day Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer died on mount gilboa that's why that's why david says in his psalm 32 <coughs> many are the sorrows of the wicked many are the sorrows of the wicked church today if you want goodness and mercy to follow you like david then you must be an anointed man you must be an anointed woman how many of you want goodness and mercy to follow you you need not ask for goodness and mercy you just ask for the anointing Lord I need your anointing God every day early morning let this be your prayer anoint me today God anoint me today anoint me a fresh God fill me today Lord lead me into a new spiritual experience God help me to have a personal encounter with you Lord I need your visitation God I need your touch Lord I need your anointing God let this be your prayer every day pray earnestly you will experience tremendous things number 5 the fifth blessing that comes through the anointing we can know all things i call this revelation revelation turn your bible to first corinthians chapter 2 first corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 first corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 but as it is written i had not seen nor you heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god had prepared for them that love him was 
but god has revealed them unto us come on by his, by his spirit by his spirit by the holy spirit for the spirit searches all things they are the deep things of god amen today we must come to the holy spirit in order to know god's future plan for your life friend i want to tell you if you really love the lord god has prepared tremendous things for you which eyes have not seen ears not heard amen who is going to reveal that to you the holy spirit only an anointed man can understand god's plans can understand god's purposes amen come to the holy spirit today in order to know god's future plans for your life we can know all things through the anointing of the holy spirit because he is the revealer of the secrets come on are you with me amen we can understand the reasons for our past failures through the anointing of the holy spirit we can understand the reasons listen to this we can understand the reason for our past failures through the anointing of the holy spirit number 2 we can receive the divine counsel for our present living through the anointing of the holy spirit we can receive the divine counsel for our present living through the anointing of the holy spirit number 3 we can receive the guidance for our future living through the anointing of the holy spirit reasons for our past failures counsel for our present living guidance for our future living it's all through the anointing of the holy spirit amen Today it's very unfortunate. Many believers they run to prophets and prophetesses to know God's will for their lives. Even believers, they go to somebody who prays and and he says, "Come on, I want to know God's will." And that person, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not blaming anybody. But that person, just because you have gone there, he has to say something to you. and moreover you have also given him an offering <laughs> so he cannot send you away without saying anything he has to say something so whether he gets it from god or not he says something to you you believe it and you come back home satisfied but you end up in trouble because it is not of the lord it is not of the lord church please listen to this the ministry of prophets in the new testament is totally different from that of the whole testament if you understand this you are safe in the old testament it was directive prophecies if you read the prophecies in the old testament a prophet will say you go there you do this <coughs> it will be directive prophecies but in the new testament no directive prophecies are told from god listen please listen it's very very important new testament no direct prophecies in the new testament no true prophet will say you go there you do this no do you know the reason what is the reason holy spirit if a if a prophet for example you go to a prophet or someone who prays and he says you go here you do this and other things this man will hear that and he'll come and do the same and next time when he's in trouble he will go to whom he will go to that same person what that man is doing is he is taking the place of the holy spirit which is very very dangerous <coughs> if any prophet directs you to do something you know what he is doing he is taking the place of the holy spirit which is very very dangerous for him therefore in the new testament servants of god can give you counsel the prophecies are only for your encouragement for your comfort for your edification for your spiritual growth for warning for exhortation for reproof but no direction because you and i have to get the direction from the holy spirit amen i should not run to any man any man 
Don't come to me. Don't come to pastor for direction. You are a believer. You are an anointed man. Anointed woman. Go to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can give you only counsel. Maybe while preaching, a word of prophecy may come to encourage you, to edify you, to strengthen you, or to reprove you. It may come as a warning, but no directive prophecies in the New Testament. Because <coughs> Holy Spirit wants to direct you and direct me. Are you with me? Is it clear to you? So don't ever make a mistake of going to a person and say, tell me what is God's will for me. You will be in trouble. You will be in trouble. See, that's the reason we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Turn your Bible to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. The word of God is very clear. <coughs> 1 John chapter 2. Verses 26 and 27. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Did, you. did you hear that? Did you hear that? These things have I written unto you concerning them that deceive you. He's talking about false prophets. Deceive you, huh? But the anointing which ye have received of him <coughs> yes. abided in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it had, as it had taught you, ye shall abide in him. Amen. The word of God is very, very, very clear. Amen. If you run to a man to know what you have to do, if you run to a man to know what is God's will for you, you will be deceived. You will be deceived. Apostle John says, you have the anointing. You have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Anointing. The Holy Spirit will direct you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. Therefore, don't run to any man. Go to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <clears throat> Seek the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. About your personal life. About your family. About your ministry. Amen. It's all direction directly from the Holy Spirit. How many of you follow me this morning? Amen. This is something very important. Today it's very unfortunate because believers are ignorant of this truth. They run everywhere and they are terribly deceived. They are living in deception. They don't understand. <coughs> In the Old Testament, God spoke through Urim and Tumim. In the Old Testament, God spoke through Urim and Tumim. The high priest had these two stones. <coughs> Urim and Tumim. You know, many, many of us, we don't understand what it is. Only when I went to Israel this time, I understood what it is. See, a high priest will have a long rope. Will have a wrong rope. And he will have a very big pocket. Very big pocket. When he put his hand here, it will go down. And inside those two pockets, he will have stones. Two different types of stones. One stone will be in white color. The other stone will be in black color. And similarly, he will have some stones in this pocket. So now a person comes and he places his problem and he wants to know what to do. So the priest put his hand into the pocket and he takes some stones. And when he takes few stones in his hand, if the white stones are more, then the answer is positive. <laughs> if the black stones are more, then the answer is negative. See, this is how people in the Old Testament understood the will of God. Through Urim and Tumim. But that is Old Testament. Don't ever try that today. Don't ask me, Pastor, what stone do you have in your pocket? <laughs> I don't have any stones. But the Holy Spirit, He leads us. He guides us. He instructs us. He teaches us. Something amazing. See, read, that, read a few other verses. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Read again verse, verse 9 and 10. But as it is written, I had not seen, nor you heard, neither have entered the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. 
but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of God verse 11 for what man know the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God verse 12 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So God reveals. The Holy Spirit is a secret. He's a revealer of the secrets. When you have the anointing, the Holy Spirit will reveal your future plans. The Holy Spirit will reveal the ministry that you have to do. The Holy Spirit will reveal, you know, the things concerning your family, about your children. Seek the Holy Spirit of God. The more you're anointed, the more God's plans will be very, very clear, vivid and apparent to you. Amen. Number six, sixth blessing. The enemy shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Sixth blessing. <coughs> Turn your Bible to Psalm 92, verses 10 and 11. Psalm 92, verses 10 and 11. I call this victory. I call this victory. The enemy shall be destroyed through the anointing. But my own shall thou be exalted the own of a, of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also, also shall see my, see my desire on mine enemies. And my <laughs> ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Amen. Beautiful. But my horn shall thou exalt like the own of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Amen. What is the result? Verse 11, my eyes shall see the desire on my enemy and my ears shall hear the, my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Now church, it is very, very dangerous for anyone to touch God's anointed. Very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. See, the reason why Saul was killed on Mount Gilboa is because all along he was against the anointed. Saul never knew that the danger of being, you know, against an anointed man. Because Saul was against the anointed, you know what was the result? He was becoming weaker and weaker and weaker. What does the Bible say? Turn about the second Samuel 3, 1. Anyone who is against the anointed will become weaker and weaker. Second Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. Oh, there was long war between the house of Saul <laughs> and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. What a terrible verse. What is the reason? What is the reason for the house of Saul to go weaker and weaker? Because he was constantly against the anointed. Church, anyone for that matter. It's a very, very solemn thought. Never be against any anointed person. Whether it's a servant of God or whether it's a believer. It is very dangerous for anyone to touch God's anointed. Amen. My brother, my sister. When you're anointed with fresh oil, any enemy who rise against you shall be destroyed. When you're anointed, when you're truly anointed with fresh oil, any enemy who rise up against you shall be destroyed. It's like a fly sitting on a hot stove. Very dangerous. It's like a fly sitting on a hot stove. And I want you to notice something in verse 11. Read verse 11. Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies. Mm. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. What is he saying? Mine eye also shall see my desire on my enemies. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. You know what the psalm is saying? If my enemies are local enemies, your eyes will see them. But if your enemies are outstation enemies, <laughs> your ears will hear them. 
that's what he's saying if they are locally here somewhere you will see them with your eyes but if they are out station if they've gone to america or australia or england or somewhere you will not be able to see them but you will hear it will you you it will you will hear <coughs> read the verse again my eye also shall see my desire on my enemies and my ears shall hear my desire on the wicked that rise up against me that's why david says i shall be anointed with fresh oil amen one of the names of a god is jehovah nissi the lord is our banner the lord is our banner the lord is our victory what does the bible say in exodus 17 verses 15 and 16 exodus 17 verses 15 and 16 and moses built an altar and called the name of it jehovah nissi for he said because the lord had sworn that the lord will have war with the amalek with amalek yes. from generation to generation blessed be the name of the lord it's something amazing you read meditate on the passage you will understand the work of the lord <coughs> verse 15 the bible says and moses built an altar and called the name of it jehovah nissi for he said because the lord had sworn that the lord will have war with amalek from generation to generation the lord says moses even after your death even after you die i will not stop my war with them amen i will fight with them from generation to generation see verse 13 and joshua discomfited amalek and his people with the edge of the sword and the lord said to moses <coughs> write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the years of joshua for i will utterly put out the remembrance of amalek from under heaven and there moses built an altar and called the name of the lord jehovah nissi because the lord had sworn that the lord will have war with amalek from generation to even after moses even after joshua you know what god is saying even after your days on this earth still god will have war with your enemies that's terrible amen not only with your enemies with the generation with the generation of their enemy of your enemies from generation to generation god is very very serious about it god is very zealous about his anointed ones god is very zealous about his anointed one god is not going to keep quiet when he sees somebody touching his anointed amen the bible says when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the lord shall raise a standard against him that's a prophecy that isaiah said in isaiah 59 we don't have time to look into the verse the enemy shall come in like a flood Isaiah 59 was 19. Isaiah 59, 19. Read it quickly. So shall they, fe so shall they fear the name of the Lord mm. from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Amen. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Who is this enemy God is referring to? He's referring to the enemy that comes against the church. Against the church. If you turn a Bible to Revelation chapter 12, you will understand better. Revelation chapter 12, verses 15 to 17. This is an enemy against the church of God. Because Revelation chapter 17, talking about a woman, you know, and the child, it is talking about the church. Revelation 12, 15. 16 and 17 and the serpent cast out its mouth his mouth and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood of water the as a flood uh. that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood yes and the earth helped the woman and the earth swallowed her mouth and swallowed up the flood which a dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you just imagine the dragon. The Bible says. In verse 15. The serpent cast out of his mouth. A water as a flood. 
as a flood. We know flood is devastating. This is against the church. This is against the church. And the Bible says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, wroth with the church, and meant to make war with the remnant of a seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So when the enemy comes in like a flood against the church of God, the Lord shall raise a standard, a flag against the devil, the flag of victory, the banner, because he's Jehovah Nisi for us. Amen. It's anointing that protects the church. Friend, it's anointing that protects the church because every moment the devil is attacking the church, attacking the church, because the greatest enemy today is the church for Satan. But thank God we are protected. Thank God we are, we are preserved because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As we are filled with the Holy Spirit more and more, we shall have the banner, of the flag of the victory of the Lord lifted up against the enemy because the battle is of the Lord. The battle is of the Lord and the victory is ours. Somebody shout Amen. Amen. Friend, how are you facing confusion in your family? Opposition in your ministry? Problem in your workplace? Do you feel that every door is closed? God is speaking to you. Are you afraid of somebody who is working against you? The Lord says, need not worry about it. Amen. All that you need to ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, anoint me, Father. I need a fresh oil, God. Not the old oil which you received a month ago. Not the anointing that you received a few months ago. Lord, I need anointing today. I need a fresh anointing. Amen. The Lord says, I will strengthen you like a unicorn. I will strengthen you like a unicorn. You shall have the strength of a unicorn. Have you seen a unicorn? It has a very big, you know, on between its mouth and its nose. And it can even tear a roaring lion into pieces. It can even drive away, drive away a powerful elephant. That's the power of the anointing. Psalm 92 verse 10. Don't forget that verse. Psalm 92 verse 10. Read that verse. Psalm 92 verse 10. But my own shall thou be exalted like the own of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. When I am anointed with fresh oil, I shall have the strength of a unicorn. I can drive away any kind of enemy. Amen. The victory is ours. Last thought. I'll just finish it in 2-3 minutes. We shall have always joy and gladness when we are anointed with the Holy Spirit. Joy and gladness is the seventh blessing that comes through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Church, have you seen the faces of the politicians? <laughs> you can see only clouds of darkness on their faces. Have you seen the face of some actors or actresses? You can see only ray of sorrow and grief within them. But on the other hand, have you seen, a, seen the face of an anointed man? Anointed woman? Always glowing. Always filled with joy and gladness. Psalm 45 verse 7. See what Psalmist says. Love this verse. We'll read this and close in prayer this morning. Psalm 47 and 45 verse 7. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness. As above thy fellows. Amen. This is a prophecy about Jesus Christ. Oil of gladness was upon him. The Bible says in another place, Jesus rejoiced in his spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, your heart shall be filled with joy. The radiance of God's everlasting joy shall be seen on your faces. The glory of the Christian life is to reflect this divine joy on, the, on your faces before other people. Amen. Joy and gladness shall be seen by others. If you are anointed by the Holy Spirit. Will you close your eyes right now? I feel the wonderful presence of the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Joy and gladness. Through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. No matter whatever your circumstances are. An anointed man will always be joyful. Unmindful of his circumstances. Irrespective of the problems. An anointed woman will be always joyful. You can see the joy 
of the Lord on the faces. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why don't we stand up to feed God's people? We're going to ask God for this anointing. Are you ready to receive a fresh anointing this morning? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I feel the wonderful presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Oh, the redeemed of the Lord shall come. They shall come with singing. Oh, they shall come with joy. Amen. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Sorrow and mourning shall flee away. The Lord says, even I, I am that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou should be afraid of man that shall die? And of the son of man we shall be made of us grass. The Lord says, I am the Lord who comforts you. I am the Lord who strengthens you. You shall obtain joy and gladness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Every eye closed right now. Ask God to fill you this morning. Offer a very brief, sincere prayer to the Lord right now and say, Lord, I'm not asking for anything else. All that I ask is your anointing. I'm standing in your presence as an empty vessel, Lord. And I want to leave your sanctuary this morning with an overflowing experience. I feel the mighty power of the Holy Spirit of God. I feel the marvelous move of the Holy Spirit right now. Every eye closed. Please don't look here and there. It's a time between you and your God. Seek God's anointing with all your heart. Say, Lord, fill me, Master. Fill me, Master. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. I need your anointing, God. <coughs> I need your anointing, God. I need your fresh oil, Lord. Anoint my head with your fresh oil. Anoint my head with your fresh oil. Anoint my head with your fresh oil. May anointing flow, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Open your mouth and cry to the Lord. Open your mouth and ask. Open your mouth wide and the Lord says, I will fill it. Open your mouth wide and the Lord says, I will fill it. Holy Kabash and Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. God is filling some of you right now. I feel the mighty move of the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Touch your people, Lord. Touch your people, Lord. Fill your people, Lord. May a mighty anointing fall upon your people. Oh, may the fresh heart of the anointing fall upon your people. Be poured out upon your people. May your people be filled. Be filled. Be fair. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Oh, we praise you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit.